Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. We'll be getting started shortly. Thank you for being here today. All right, I believe we can get started. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to our Anyone Scotland webinar. We're really excited to be able to talk with you all today about all the logistics and all the things you need to know prior to your semester in Glasgow. Uh, I'm joined today by a team of colleagues who will be walking through all things pre-departure, talking about life on site with programming and excursions that we all have planned for all of you. Uh, during this time, we also hope to answer all questions you might have. So while we think we'll do this through this presentation, I also just wanted to point out that we do have a chat function that you're able to submit your questions to. Um, you can utilize this chat function at any time, and then a member of our team will be behind the scenes answering questions. So welcome everyone, and we'll journey into the next slide. So my name is Ryan Shannon. Eric is an assistant director, part of the Global Experience Office. Uh, my main role is to kind of support the logistics of the NUN Scotland program, per program working very closely with the University of Glasgow on um, all the great things uh, planning out this fall semester for all of you. Uh, in addition to myself, I also have a colleague, Dani Rodriguez, so I'll have her introduce herself. Everyone, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be in the world. My name is Dani Rodriguez. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm one of the associate directors for Global Student Success. Um, so I will be co-managing the site um, from Boston with Ryan, and then also our lovely um, University of Glasgow partners. Um, and I will also be on site to see all of you once you have arrived later on in September. So I'm very excited for that and welcome everybody. Thanks, Danny. I think just like a takeaways, I know you see a lot of different names, a lot of different titles and all of that. Just know that there's a team back in Boston that's here to support you and the whole experience during the course of the fall. Uh, but now we're going to journey into talking about the folks that will actually be on the ground with you uh, supporting the program. So I'll pass it over to Jenna. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. My name is Jenna Dean, and I am the Student Success Manager, so I will be on site with you in Scotland as part of the team there to support you, along with Dan, who I'll pass it off to. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, my name is Daniel Silverman. I'm going to be the program supervisor on site with all you for the whole term. Uh, and I think I'll pass it back to Jenna to talk briefly about the rest of our team that's gonna be joining us. Sure thing. So alongside myself and Daniel, we will have four coordinators that will be supporting you and you'll get to meet them all on site. Um, and here are the four of them. We have Molly, Kate, Taylor, and Madeline who will be joining us. And you'll get to meet them as soon as we get there and we pick you all up from the airport. Now we will hand it over to our lovely uh, partners in Glasgow. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Colette McGowan. I'm the Study Abroad Partnerships Manager um, based in Glasgow, where I've worked for a very, very, very long time. And I am um, assisted by my amazing colleague, Liz, who I will um, allow to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Liz Stagiati. I am the International Programs Coordinator for the University of Glasgow. I have been here for about a year working with U of G, and so I'm very excited to welcome you to Glasgow for the second installment of NUN. So just, uh, just to give a little agenda for the day, uh, for, our, for our webinar, we're going to talk a little bit about life in Glasgow, some things about academics that will be pertinent to you guys, uh, how you can prepare for your departure, what arrival in the first week is going to look like, and a little bit about our programming and excursions. So I will hand this back to uh, Liz and Colette. Thank you, Daniel. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Glasgow. Um, it is the city that I have lived in and grown up in all my life. Um, so I do know a little bit about it. I've also been a student in Glasgow, although that was many, many years ago. Um, so Glasgow, the city where you will be studying, um, is the largest city in Scotland, although it is still quite small compared to many um, larger cities around the world. We have a population of just over 1.6 million in the greater Glasgow area. 
and just around six to 700,000 in the city itself. The city is a very student oriented city because we have, as well as the University of Glasgow, we have two other universities based in the city. Um, and so together it uh, numbers around 50, over 50,000 students um, in and around Glasgow at any given time. Which means that everywhere in Glasgow, there's a student night happening at any particular time. There's also um, a significant number of US residents who claim Scottish an ancestry, would you believe, um, to over 20 million from various parts of Scotland, not all just from Glasgow. Um, so perhaps you're one of them, perhaps your family also has some roots in Scotland, and that's part of the reason that you're choosing to come here. But whatever your decision or whatever your reason for coming to Glasgow, we are really looking forward to working with you and hope that you are as excited as we are. So as I mentioned, Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland. It's the fourth largest in the UK. Um, it has everything that a large city really should have, um, but it has a, a smaller feel to it. And it's a very walkable city. It was also voted um, in the top 10 um, out of the cities, various cities in the world, and um, the most recent time um, in the Time Out magazine of 2022. Glasgow is very well known for being a friendly, welcoming place, and you'll see that around the city itself. The city slogan is People Make Glasgow, and you'll see these banners everywhere, um, around the universities themselves, but also around the city of Glasgow. And hopefully, again, you will experience that friendliness when you come um, to our amazing city. The warmth of the people certainly makes up for the weather that you may experience, and there's more about that later on. Um, we may be a, a wet and drich um, city, or a, a wet and drich country, but our warmth and friendliness definitely makes up for it. The name Glasgow comes from the Gaelic, to, which means dear green place. And we do have many, many parks in and around the, um, the city itself. None more so than around the West End, which is where the university is located. Um, there are two big parks around that area um, as well, which you'll get to experience um, by either walking through on a daily basis or by just hanging out in the park when the weather is good. Um, we do like the sunshine when it makes its rare appearance. Glasgow, the city, um, is also a top destination for shopping. Believe it or not, it's one of the top cities in the UK um, for shopping outside of London. And if any of you are shopaholics, a little bit like myself, then you will have an amazing time. Um, I'm not so sure what the currency is going to be like for, for many of you when you come to Glasgow and to the UK. Hopefully it will be in your favour and you will find that it is relatively inexpensive, um, but you will certainly find many, many amazing shops, all the high street shops that you could wish for, plus a lot of the designer shops um, around the city centre as well. And for those of you with a real passion and interest in music, Glasgow is a, certainly a great place to come and visit. Um, we are a UNESCO city of music, and that's testament to the amazing venues um, and just the, the array of music that you can experience um, practically every night of the, the week, um, from small intimate gigs, from small intimate pubs where a couple of musicians might just strike up a, a some playing to the larger type concert venues that we have around the city itself. Um, you really can't uh, wish for anything better around the city in terms of music. Um, many famous bands were discovered in Glasgow as well. So you never know, perhaps you'll be here to hear the next Oasis, um, who knows, but certainly you'll have fun finding out. Thanks, Dan. I mentioned some of the venues, the Ovo Hydro, which you see in the picture, is just about a five minute walk from your residence hall. Um, you'll see it in the background in this picture. We also have two student unions on campus, um, one of which particularly um, really is excellent at bringing top name bands to the, the university. And you as students will get first 
um, attempt at uh, securing tickets for that. But you can really find music of all different genres um, around the city, as I said, any night of the week. Um, you just need to look out, um, check the, the listings. There's lots of uh, magazines, lots of online listings as well, where you'll be able to find out what's happening any given night. The, Scot the country of Scotland itself is quite a small country. So we are just over 5.1 million people. Um, I'm sure some of you come from cities that are larger than that. But again, it's a beautiful country and uh, we were voted as such by Rough Guide in 2019. You'll see the, the image just at the side here, that is Ben Anne, one of the mountains in Scotland. So around about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Glasgow, you're right into the highlands of Glasgow, er, of Scotland. Um, it's very accessible to get to, your public transport is pretty good. And within that length of time, you can be out in the great outdoors. We have many different activities that you can take part in, either individually or through the many clubs and societies that the University of Glasgow offers. So there's lots of outdoor um, clubs and societies for mountain walking, or mountain climbing, um, hill walking and skiing um, as well. We do have our very own ski resort, uh, although the time of year that you're coming, you may not find that there's there's a, it's as busy or there isn't um, as much snow as you would want, but you can still go up to the, the resorts even when there isn't snow and just experience the amazing, um, the amazing scenery up there. It's also a very cultural city, or, or country rather. And again, the cities around Scotland um, will be thriving with many different music, theatre, comedy, festivals, um, etc. You'll be arriving just at the end of the, the, one of the biggest festivals in the world, which is of course the Edinburgh Festival. But there may still be wondering about Edinburgh, you may still see some of the acts, and um, certainly the street act anyway, um, at the beginning of September when you're around. We're also steeped particularly in history. It's a, a very old country. Everywhere you go, you'll be exposed to amazing architecture, amazing history, um, lots and lots of uh, feats of engineering and more castles than you could possibly wish for. Um, and we'll, on some of the excursions, we'll, um, we'll take you to some of those castles and uh, help you to find out a little bit more about it. But also, um, a sporting nation, we may not be terribly, terribly good at it, but we do enjoy sport, um, particularly, particularly watching sport. And if any of you have been following the cycling or are fans of cycling, the, um, the UCI World Cycling Championships are taking place around Scotland, but predominantly in Glasgow right at this moment, up until the 14th of August. So if you are um, interested at all, if you tune in to any um, sports channel that is showing the cycling, you'll be able to see images of Glasgow and other parts of Scotland at the moment where the cycling is actually taking place. But similarly, if you want to experience some of the other sporting events, we have two major Scottish um, Premier League football clubs in the city. And during the time, the semester that you'll be here, there will be many, many meetings, many fixtures that will be playing um, that you should be able to, if, if you're so interested, um, purchase tickets to go and see some of the, the Premier League football games that take place in the city um, at any particular time. Definitely worth going to as it's a particularly special atmosphere that you, you, would, um, you would experience. We're really lucky in Glasgow that we have pretty good public transport. Um, we're well served by buses and by trains. There are two major train stations in the city. But additionally, um, we have Scotland's only underground train um, running um, around the West End into the city centre and a little bit further out to the, um, the south side of the city. It's an excellent way to get around. Um, it's really safe and you can't get lost because it just goes round in a circle. Um, it's affectionately known as the clockwork orange because it goes in a circle and the trains themselves are orange. So as I say, you can't really get lost because if you miss your stop, you just stay on 
and continue round. Um, to go round the whole circle takes, I, in fact, I can't actually remember, I think it's something like 37 minutes, um, but it isn't, it isn't a long distance at all. But it's a, a really excellent way for moving around the city from the West End, particularly down to the city centre, and you avoid all the traffic um, that is taking place over ground. And the next couple of images are just um, images of the area around the university. So the university I mentioned before is located in the west end of the city, which is a really nice pocket of the city of Glasgow. And um, this is one of the main um, areas where there are many restaurants, pubs, cafes, a small cinema as well, um, which is a, a really lovely area and always, always busy. This is called Ashton Lane. And now I'm going to hand back, I think, to Daniel or to Jenna, who's going to talk a little bit about the academics, or is it, I can't remember, is it? No, it might be Liz, actually, now that I've seen the slide. Yep, nope, that's me. So I'm going to talk about academics. I actually started out at U of G as a student myself, so I'm very familiar with both the US style of university structure and Scottish as well. So there is going to be a bit of a difference, maybe not what you're quite used to from high school or expecting going into your first year of college. Uh, the structure of your semester and your classes is going to be a little bit different. You're going to have one lecture for each of your classes. And then in addition to your one weekly lecture for each of your classes, you'll also have a seminar, which is gonna be a smaller group of students within each class. You'll have a tutor for each class. So you'll really be able to engage with the material as well as the academic staff who are gonna help you out. Um, also a major difference for me, which may be a major, major difference for you going forward in the UK education system is your assignments. You're not going to have quite as many assignments, which sounds fun, but you do have to very much stay on top of your own schoolwork. No one is going to be on your case, as it were, to stay on top of your studies, stay on top of your assignments. You may only have one or two assignments per class, so you'll want to really keep track of your workload and um, due dates for assignments, midterms, finals, and all that good stuff. Um, we do have plenty of resources on hand for you on campus. So in addition to those smaller group sessions, seminars, where you'll be with smaller groups of students and tutors, we also have dedicated office hours from all of our staff. And we have disability support as well as our student learning and development team who are here to offer all different kinds of support. Obviously, student disability support is there to uh, offer any kind of extra resources that you may need, depending on whatever disabilities you may have. And student learning and development is there for anyone, whether you have a disability or not, to help with tutoring, uh, writing style, academic writing style, research uh, preparation, research tutoring, and all other sorts of developmental workshops. Hand it back to Daniel for the Credit. Sure. Uh, so I guess all I will say on the matter of uh, transfer credits is uh, at the end of the term, well, in the springtime, you will receive uh, transcripts from both the University of Glasgow and from Northeastern University reflecting the credits that you will bring back with you in order to uh, get credit for courses you take, you'll have to achieve a D minus or higher. Uh, and different to previous years, the GPA that you achieve while at the University of Glasgow will come with you back to Northeastern. So you'll be able to start um, start in the spring with a GPA, uh, depending on what uh, grades you achieve while abroad. So yeah, so I will hand it back to Liz uh, to talk about the facilities. Yeah, so um, what you're seeing on your screen right now is just two examples of some of the lecture halls we have on campus. Um, what we've highlighted here is just the blend of old and new that we have on campus. So the modern and traditional, we've got 
our main building, which is our oldest building on campus, um, which you'll see to your, I've forgotten my left from my right. Uh, that is the left-hand side. No, it's not, that's the right-hand side. Um, so we've got some very much older buildings on campus, which kind of feels like Hogwarts when you're studying in those. But then of course we have newer facilities. We have our James McCune Smith Learning Hub, which opened in 2021 and um, plenty of other newer buildings that will be available for your use when you get here. Okay, so for pre preparing for departure. So you're all here, which is awesome. This is our required Scotland webinar and we should be finished right around 1230. Um, and we'll have some time at the end for questions as well. Along with that, you all should have finished your articulate rise modules as of July 31st. If you're sitting here right now and thinking, oops, I didn't do that, get to it because we're gonna be emailing you soon to make sure that you get these finished um, before we head out and you should be able to see your application status check. For those of you who are on our group flight, you need to make sure that you are checking your email all the time because that is where all your information is gonna be sent. That includes if there's any delays or any other new materials that we need to send out for you. If you miss a connection, that is something we're gonna ask that you contact Advantage Travel right away. If you end up calling us, that's okay, but we're gonna send you right over to Advantage to make sure they can book you your next connecting flight. And for those of you on our group flight, we're going to be picking you up at the Glasgow airport in big buses. We'll have, we'll have all your stuff. We'll be very excited to see you. And if you have any Northeastern gear, make sure you wear it so we'll be able to pick you out of a crowd. And I'm gonna pass it off to Daniel to talk about um, what it's gonna look like if you're not on our group flight. Sure, uh, thanks Jenna. So if you're flying independently, we'll be so excited to, to catch you when you get here. Uh, we do wanna make sure you know that if you are flying independently, you will also have to uh, arrange for your own transportation from the airport to the residences in Glasgow. There's a possibility uh, that if your flight is sort of near the group flight, you might be able to join but that's something you're gonna to have to coordinate with us. So if you're thinking about that, reach out to us so we don't um, so we don't so we don't miss you. Uh, and also, if you get delayed, reach out, contact us. We're here. Uh, for uh, permits and visas, so for all of our U.S. and EU citizens, this is something that you can do just when you arrive. Just show up and you'll be fine. Uh, everyone else, uh, if you are not a EU or a US citizen, uh, you should have already applied for your standard visitor visa. But if you have not done this yet, uh, now is the time uh, because we will require you to apply in advance uh, before you depart your home country. Uh, I think I'll pass this back to Jenna. Are you talking about this? Am I talking about this? Sure, I can do it. Um, so as Daniel said, as you all arrive, or if before you arrive, if you are somebody that needs to apply for your visa, you should be doing that right away if it's not already done. And for everyone, there are some documents that you should absolutely be bringing with you as you are traveling overseas, including your passport, printed out and you in and you have G enrollment letters. So both of these were emailed to you. We really wanna make sure that you print them out and just have them on hand in case you were to need them. Any visa documents, if this is applicable to you. We also suggest a printed proof of funds. While this isn't always necessary, it is nice to be able to show that along with that and your enrollment letters will show that your housing is covered. And then finally your printed flight itinerary in this day of tech, I know you all have them on your phones, but it's always helpful, especially with connecting flights, just to have that printed out so that everybody knows your end destination. And if you have your return flight home to print that out as well, just in case anybody at the border is curious as to when you're leaving. All right, so a little bit into packing because we are getting quite close and I'm sure you're all getting excited. Um, I know I already started my packing list. So um, the most important thing that we wanna put is don't bring more luggage than you can carry on your own. When you arrive in Glasgow, if you're on a group flight, yes, we'll be picking you up on a bus, but we can only go so far into the airport and we will not be dragging your bags out for you. So just make sure we really like to limit to one checked bag 
And just remember, if you have things that you need right now, like a waterproof jacket or shoes, you can also purchase those when you get there if you don't have them already. Um, so just start thinking about things that you might need and that you want to bring with you and things that you can also purchase when you get there, such as pillows, blankets, and other bedding. They're all provided. So to get a full look at all of our provided items, you are getting a bedding, a bedding linen pack, which includes sheets, a pillow, and a blanket. There are no towels, so our suggestion would be you bring one, maybe just for the first couple of nights. But as you can see on the bottom there, we are doing an Ikea trip. So anything you decide is not up to par in your living space, you'll be able to pick up then. Um, as well as in your kitchen, you'll be sharing with your four other flatmates, pots, a chopping board, a knife, and other cooking utensils. But once again, anything you think you're missing out on, you can get from our Ikea trip. And as you're packing your clothes, um, what I've learned from our Scottish residents is that layering is the key here. So September and October, if some of you are from the Northeast, I'm sure those temperatures look kind of familiar and then it starts to get cold. But the thing to remember is it's raining at least 12 days of the month. And that rain can be from a light mist to torrential and when you're wet, you're cold. So just think about that as you're packing and as we get into those colder months. And my final thing on packing here is to just notice that the converters and adapters are different in Scotland. So they use a type G, it has those three prongs to adapt and the voltage is about hundred volts higher than we use in the US. So this is something I recommend purchasing beforehand just to make sure that you can plug in all your devices when you get there. And to also think about if you're going to be traveling around Europe or any other countries, um, this type G is for Scotland and some other places in the UK, but not necessarily all of Europe. So if you plan to travel, just make sure you're gonna have plugs available for all the different places that you're going to. All right, and I believe I'm gonna pass it off to Liz to talk about arrival. Okay, so arrival, um, we will be, if you're on a group flight, as we've discussed already, we'll be collecting you from the airport and taking you to the accommodation. I believe both group flights are getting in September 9th, which is awesome. So we're very excited to welcome you. And then on the 10th, as has been discussed, we're organizing a trip to Ikea. So you can pick up whatever loose ends you may feel like you need in your room. We'll also be organizing an on-site orientation here on campus with myself and Colette and several other colleagues from U of G. So we'll be giving you a tour of campus as well as an overview of a whole lot of things related to the university, academics, safety. We'll also be taking you for your visa compliance, visa registration um, that will occur on campus as well. And it doesn't take very long. So you will have time to visit our welcome week festivities as well. Um, I believe Daniel and Jenna are going to help you with cell phone setup. We'll be providing um, SIM cards so that you can get your cell phone set up pretty much as soon as you arrive. And we are also hoping to organize a walking tour of the city center so you can get better acquainted during that first week with your new home. So first week activities, I just want to touch upon what it's going to look like a little bit. So most of the first week when there are no classes to attend, we're going to be doing excursions to get to know the neighborhood, to get to know the West End and the city itself. Uh, like Liz mentioned and Jenna mentioned, uh, for, the, for the items that we don't have for you and that you find maybe there's just this thing that you'd like to have, uh, we're going to be going to Ikea to outfit your rooms, your kitchens, whatever needs you may have to make your space your space. Uh, we're going to be doing dinners with the, our family groups. You're going to meet your family groups and get to know uh, your coordinator that's going to be leading you throughout the term. Uh, and there's just going to be time to get to know your cohort, to get to know the campus, and to get your feet planted on the ground before classes begin the following week. And Liz or Colette, I'm not sure if you want to speak to the um, the campus a little bit. Yeah, Liz, I can take that. So um, the campus itself is uh, is quite large. 
Um, it's interspersed with some private housing, but it spreads quite a large part of the West End of Glasgow. Um, and we're still growing. So you will see the new parts of the campus, and I, I'll move on to talk a little bit about that in a second. But the image that you see here, um, it shows the old and the new parts of the, um, the campus. So we have our very old building, which is the, the one which looks very much like Hogwarts. Um, and then just behind and on the other up either side of it you'll see the newer buildings um, which have been added over over the last couple of hundred years or so. Um, what you're seeing as well we have um, some um, specific areas that we've pointed out so we have the Sir George Gilbert Scott building um, or just the main building as we tend to call it and that's the old one. We have three public museums in the university that showcase the Hunterian collection and Charles Rennie Mackintosh house Charles Rennie Mackintosh, for those of you who are not familiar with that name, was a, a very famous architect and designer born and, uh, in Glasgow and uh, most of his work was done around Glasgow as well. We have a 13 floor library with over 2 million books and special collections um, and also many study spaces are located in the library as well as print um, facilities um, and other facilities that you may require, such as a, a cafe um, and the, obviously the special collection and the loan section and the short term loans. And I think I'm taking this one as well, but if anyone wants to, yep, I think this is the University of Glasgow. So the as a student, you're, you are a student of Northeastern University, but you're also classed as a student of the University of Glasgow um, while you're here. And as such, you will have access to all the same student support services that any other regular University of Glasgow student would have access to. That includes our wellbeing and inclusion service, counselling and psychological services, um, the wellbeing advisors who are located in different colleges, mental health advisors, there's lots of self-help resources that you can, you can be referred on to as well. In the accommodation in your housing, there are resident life um, assistants who are there 24 hours around the clock. Um, we also have a student representative advice centre, and there is also a health centre on campus, um, which is the main doctor's surgery, um, and the one that most, most of you will likely be um, patients of if you require to use the services of a doctor. As well as working hard and studying hard, we also want you to enjoy the facilities and the resources at your fingertips. So our sport and recreation service at the University of Glasgow is open to you as well. As part of your accommodation fee, you will receive off peak gym membership. Um, if you do wish to um, pay and have full membership, you can do so for an additional cost. There are over 250 clubs at the University of Glasgow, 55 or so of them are sport affiliated clubs, but there are many others which are not sport affiliated as well. So really anything and everything um, that you may wish to take part in, and we do strongly recommend it. It's a great way to get to meet other students, not just students from the Northeastern group. So if you want to meet students from Scotland or from other parts of the UK or other parts of the world, taking part in one of the clubs is a surefire way of getting to meet people outside of classrooms. And it also gives you that opportunity to perhaps try something a little bit different. Um, and who knows, perhaps you'll carry on with that when you do go on to study um, in Boston. We have two student unions, so those are buildings as well as membership clubs. They are the Queen Margaret um, Union and the Glasgow University Union. And again, you can join them if you wish, one of them, um, or you can just use the facilities during the daytime. We also have a student newspaper and a radio station, and we have many other um, different memberships that are open to you as well. GUSA that's mentioned there is the Glasgow University Sports Association, which is the umbrella association looking after the sports clubs um, at the university. So lots and lots of different activities that you can 
take part in. And you'll have the opportunity to, during your first week at Glasgow, um, to find out about all of these clubs and societies during the Freshers' Fair. Um, Freshers' Fair is for all new students at the university um, and it uh, showcases all the different clubs, the sports clubs, the other interest clubs, and you can go along to trial sessions um, or sign up for sessions as well. You'll have that opportunity during that first week. Not sure who's taken this, but I'm happy to talk to it. Um, Kelvin Hall Street is the residence hall that you're going to be um, located in. All of you will be in the same um, residence hall over different blocks. They are split into flats or apartments, um, so that each flat has five person rooms. So, sorry, single be single bedrooms, but five individual rooms within each flat. You'll share a kitchen, you share a bathroom and a small living space um, located right within the kitchen as well. Within your flat itself or within your single study bedroom, you will have a bed which is, um, has bed linen, as Jenna already mentioned. Um, it will have a desk, it has a notice board and it has a wardrobe and a, a small chest of drawers. There is laundry in the building itself, so you'll be given a pass um, and you can load up your card in order to pay for your laundry. Um, there is 24 hour, um, 24 hour a day security um, for all of the residences around this area um, at, and uh, along Kelvin Hall Street particularly. And the residence is located about 15 minutes walk. Um, you can actually walk it probably slightly quicker if you march quite briskly um, up to campus. There's also um, a computer room and uh, as I mentioned, bedding is provided as well. And so these are just some of the images of the single study bedrooms um, in Kelvin Hall Street. So you'll see you have a desk and a bed um, and this is the main kitchen area with the shared kitchen facilities and the, the um, the lounge area attached to that. And this is just the main reception where you will receive your keys um, when we uh, take you to check in on the first day. Some additional Glasgow facilities and resources. I mentioned already about the 13th floor library. You will also have access, as all other students do as well, to the newly built James McEwen Smith Building, which I think Liz mentions was opened in 2021. It's a state of the art uh, building designed specifically for students and catering for all different types of study um, that you may wish to do, either group study, individual study, quiet study, etc. There's also additional um, study space around the university, particularly in the library and in a building called the Freezer Building, which is opposite the library. So it is something the university feels very strongly about in providing that space to its students, um, as it is something that students told us in one of our surveys that they, um, they really appreciate and uh, are, we're looking for more study spaces. So we delivered on that. There is a bookshop on campus where you can purchase all your textbooks and um, they will have lists of the main textbooks that each class um, requires um, and you can purchase stationery and some um, branded items there as well as in the gift shop which is also located in the university. And these are just some images of some of the main buildings that we talked about there. So this is the James McEwen Smith building. Um, it's right in the heart of the campus. And this is just an inside shot of that building. It's also one of the main areas where you'll find um, catering, um, food for uh, during the day if you are on campus most of your day you'll be able to go there but if you don't fancy University of Glasgow catering um, you can walk literally about three minutes from the James McCune Smith, and that takes you to the high street, um, which is called Byers Road. Um, and that is where you'll find most of the shops, cafes, restaurants, et cetera, where you can buy um, food, other types of food as well. And again, just some of the images of the main part, the main building um, of the University of Glasgow. So this is looking at 
the front of the main building and on the left or on your right will be um, the cloisters which is right in the heart of that building. Okay, and I'm going to pass to Liz, who's going to talk a little bit more about the excursions. I think that's what's coming up next. Okay, so as we have discussed, we've got three main excursions that Colette and I have been putting together. The first is going to be on September 16th, so that will be one week after you arrive. We'll be doing a day trip to Edinburgh. Uh, there are so many things to see in Edinburgh that you are not even going to possibly be, be able to get to in that one day, but the hope is that we will give you a taste of what's there and then you'll be able to get yourself there throughout the semester or other places around Scotland if you choose. Um, Edinburgh is only about an hour away on the train, so it's very easy to get to. Some of the sites that we are hoping to get you to that first day include Edinburgh Castle, as well as possibly a walking tour or an underground tour of Edinburgh City as well, as giving you some free time to explore on your own. And then the next excursion after that, we'll be doing an overnight trip up into the Highlands, which is a fantastic tour. Um, I've done this exact trip a couple of times actually and I love it every time. So we'll be going up through the Highlands through Glencoe and see the Glenfinnan Viaduct which if you've seen Harry Potter the train goes over the Glenfinnan Viaduct we'll be able to see that and we'll be spending the night in Inverness which is the capital of the Highlands and then the following day we'll be visiting a couple of other major sites uh, in the Highlands including a castle, Culloden Battlefield, and we'll get to see Loch Ness as well. And then the third day trip will be November 11th. We'll be visiting Stirling, which is only about half an hour away by train. We'll be taking a bus, but it's only about half an hour away. And again, there will be yet another castle. We have a lot of those in Scotland, as well as the William Wallace Monument, which we'll be able to take you to. Hopefully we will have good weather for that because there will be a lot of outdoor time, but that will be our third excursion, second day trip, third excursion. Am I taking this one? Uh, if you wouldn't mind yeah. starting with that, Liz, and I'll take over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've talked a little bit about health and safety already, um, but I just want to highlight the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, which is going to be your resource for emergencies. Obviously, the hope is no emergencies at all. Everyone's fine all semester. Everyone's great. But in the event of an emergency, we do have the Queen Elizabeth University Hospital at our disposal, as well as the Royal Infirmary. And of course, the Berkeley Medical Center on campus, which is your campus GP. That's who you're going to be covered by for any other health needs. Uh, and then we also have, again, other student um, counseling and psychological services for other mental health needs as well. I think, is it Daniel or Jen is going to talk about? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about prescriptions. Uh, just so uh, you guys all know, if, if any of you are traveling with prescriptions, uh, just a couple things about that. If you could, please bring uh, everything you need for the whole semester. I know sometimes people want to get prescriptions shipped, but that can end up in, um, you know, some customs issues with with uh, prescriptions being at the border, and that's not good for anyone. So if you can, uh, we suggest that you bring all of the, uh, the prescriptions that you need for the entire term that you'll be there. Uh, and to add on to that, if you have any specific questions to specific prescriptions or to just things you're concerned about, my travel plans at northeastern.edu is a great resource to reach out to with any questions you may have about your specifics. And then just another note, uh, everyone that's on this call is part of the support team for all of you that are coming here. 
So if there's something that's specific that you're concerned about uh, with your health or just anything that you would like for someone to know, uh, we're here for you. It's certainly not uh, an obligation, but if there's something you feel comfortable sharing with one of us, uh, that's what we're here for. I'll hand this Alrighty. to Jenna. Thank you. A little bit about insurance. So we have three layers of coverage for you while you are with us in Scotland. Um, and that first one being when you all get here during orientation, the first couple of days, we're going to have you applying for coverage under the NHS, which is the National Health Service. So this will cover you for the time that you're in Scotland with us. Along with that, through Northeastern, you will have emergency and urgent coverage. And then your last layer there will be the insurance that you're on, whether it's a parent or guardian or your own insurance that you're currently on. So those three together will kind of make up your health and travel insurance while you're away. Um, and that is something if you want supplemental insurance that you can purchase on your own as well, if you plan on traveling a lot or would just like that extra form of safety. But with these three here, you should be pretty well covered. And a little bit about our disability services, Liz touched on it earlier as well, but if you need any academic or housing accommodations while you're abroad, we do ask that you register with U of G as well as Northeastern, and you can see these links here. So we ask that you go through U of G to make sure that you have all the things that you need once we arrive on site, and then with Northeastern as well, so that when you transition back for the spring semester, you have all the things that you could need already set up for you. Um, if you haven't done this already, I highly suggest you start doing it now, the earlier, the better, and make sure that you're just filling out both of these applications. And just a Back note to on, you. thank you. Uh, and just a note on conduct. So just keep in mind, as we do uh, travel abroad, we are uh, representing both Northeastern and the United States of America as we land in Glasgow. So important notes are just, Keep in mind that you will be following local laws when you're on the ground in Scotland. There are University of Glasgow policies uh, as well as, well as um, policies at the, the housing that you'll be staying at. So you'll have to follow the policies of the University of Glasgow as well as the Northeastern Code of Conduct and the Inuman Supplemental Code of Conduct. So just something to keep in mind as you prepare to arrive. So a little bit more about safety. So we utilize the Global Safety Support Network. So if you haven't already put this number in your phone, I highly suggest you pull it out and do it now. This is our 24 hour, seven day a week international assistance hotline. And basically that means that you can use this before you leave. You can use it while you're away with us in Scotland, or if you decide to go away for a weekend and you happen to be in Spain or Italy or France or anywhere else, you can also call it um, then, as well as any time in an emergency, if you're looking for additional guidance, this is just one point of many of people that you can call, but I highly recommend this, especially if you plan on traveling while you're abroad. And a little bit more to begin going into our emergency protocols. So Liz talked about how we have a GP on campus, as well as all the students will be living very close to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. In a true emergency, just a little caveat here, you want to call 999 for medical, fire, and police. Um, we also recommend you download the Safe Zone app. We'll talk about this more at orientation as well. Safe Zone is an app that's used on Boston's campus as well as U of G's campus. And basically, within the click of a button, can get you connected if you were ever in an emergency situation. We also work very closely with the U of G security staff. So the security gatehouse number is on here. And all of these numbers will be provided again at orientation once everyone is on site. Um, basically, this is just us saying, we've got you covered. We are on call. We'll be giving you a bunch of numbers that you can call if any emergencies were to happen. We are well connected to the university and the surrounding emergency services and facilities. I believe this is going to go to Colette and or Liz. Yeah, I can take this. Um, so it's just, uh, again, just kind of carrying on the safety and security element of the, the presentation. I mentioned that um, Glasgow is a large city by UK standards, but it is still quite a small city um, by world standards. And the university itself is located in the West End of the city of Glasgow. And it's 
often refer to, we refer to it as a little bubble or a small town in itself. The West End is, is very much dominated by the University of, of, um, of Glasgow and just about everybody who is um, connected or around that West End of the, the city is connected somehow to the university, either by working there, by being a student there or having um, friends or relatives or somebody else who works at the university. So it's just like a small town. As such, it is relatively safe. It is still a city and we still advise that you keep your wits about you and, and don't fall into a, a false sense of, you know, it's it's a, a it, because it's small, it's going to be safe. But it does have a comparatively low crime rate compared to other big cities of the world. We are very, very lucky. We have an amazing and excellent security team that Jenna mentioned there that the, the team on the ground will have um, access to at all times. And our security team is there to keep students, staff, visitors, um, anyone coming to the university safe, both in the UK and also when they are um, conducting business out with the UK on research and, and business um, trips as well. And um, we also, as a, as a university, our security team has very strong links with Police Scotland, which is the governing police body, um, with the council, which um, looks after all the infrastructure of the city, and with the other two universities in the city itself. Um, and so we feel you will be um, very well looked after. Your parents can hopefully be um, confident that whilst you're with us, that you will indeed be very, very well looked after as well. Um, Jenna mentioned the Safe Zone app, um, and again, just to reiterate that we will be um, very much encouraging you to download that app to be used when you are um, in Glasgow. It is the same app that is used on the Boston Northeastern campus, um, and we will have we will be able to talk you through how you sign up to it using your University of Glasgow um, criteria uh, when you get to Glasgow. And just to give you a quick overview of the Safe Zone app as well and the different features, when you come to Glasgow, we will have a representative from our security team who will go through all of this with you as well. But you can see there on the app itself, it gives you access to many different facilities. It allows you to click on the emergency button, the big red button, if you are in any kind of um, in danger or you just need to get through to emergency services. There's a first aid button as well. So if you were, um, to have an accident yourself or you were to witness that, you press that first aid, it takes you straight through to the control room as well. Um, and then security button takes you through to the security control room in Glasgow. And they can access wherever you are. So when you are using the app, they are able to pinpoint exactly where you are and to send aid to you, whatever that aid might be. Um, so it is just at that extra level of safety and security for when you are in, in and around the university and in and around Glasgow itself. And living in Scotland. I think this is over to Jenna and Daniel. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll pick it up. Okay, so tra traveling all abroad, Many of you may wish to travel while you are uh, in Glasgow. We welcome uh, that, that opportunity. You're going to be close to a lot of amazing things. Uh, one brief note, uh, if you travel, uh, you will have to fill out a program deviation form. Every time you leave, uh, every time you're not spending the night in your accommodation, we'll need to know about it. Uh, again, this is just something to do. It's not a problem. We encourage travel. Uh, so yeah, that's just something to note. You'll have to fill out this form every single time you take a trip. And we just encourage you to wait until you have your full class schedule and understand uh, your commitments on site. So don't book anything for um, when you have an exam or when we're going to be doing one of our wonderful excursions because we want to share those with you. Uh, oh. Jenna, I believe you're speaking about mobile phones. Yep. -er. All right. So as we mentioned earlier, when you come join us for orientation on site, 
we are going to be giving you a SIM card. That being said, you'll be able to then pick the plan that you want for that SIM card with how many minutes and how much data, all of that fun stuff, you'll get to choose that. Um, the most important part of this is that you are bringing a phone that is unlocked and has the ability for a SIM card to be put in it. If you are not sure if your phone can do that, I would go ahead and call your current cell phone provider just to make sure that when your phone comes, you can put that new SIM card in. But you are required to have a working phone plan in case of emergency, so just to prepare you all for when you get here. Um, and we will be collecting your in-country phone number just to keep on file in case of an emergency. Um, also, as soon as that SIM card is put in and you're ready to go, the first thing we're gonna tell you to do is Call your parents because they're going to want to hear your voice and we're going to want to get you connected with them. Speaking of connections, you can go to the next slide. Staying in touch with home. Um, so for some of you, if your parents are in different countries or traveling, or if this is your first time going abroad, you might be a little nervous about how it really looks to be connecting with people in different countries. My number one recommendation is to download WhatsApp. Um, I use it all the time with my family, and it's a, just another alternative way to text, call, and video call. People also use GroupMe, Skype, Facebook Messenger. Um, I highly suggest you do a little research, find out what works best for your family and your friends, and take some time to show everybody how to use them before you get going. And then maybe even pick out a time every week or every other week that you want to be able to connect with them, just keeping in mind of our time difference. And uh, to piggyback on this idea of planning and prepping for being away, uh, we recommend you take some time to think about how you're going to deal with uh, banking and budgeting. Some people like to use their American card to take money out at ATMs while you're abroad. Some people like to just use uh, their cards just as they are. Just think about uh, maybe the transaction fees that may be incurred if you're using ATMs. It's just something to think about beforehand. And we do recommend that you uh, notify your banks that you will be in Glasgow for a few months so they don't um, inadvertently shut off your card because that wouldn't be nice. And just another thing, just consider uh, expectations for your budget as you go abroad. The conversion uh, is relatively normal right now between the pound and the dollar, but just keep in mind that you are not spending US dollars when you are abroad, you are spending pounds and that will be different. Okay, moving a little bit to the transition to Boston. I know a lot of you are thinking already about, uh, well, when this term is over, we're going to be returning to Boston. What about housing? What about classes? What about all kinds of fun things? Well, we will get into that. So while abroad, you will register for your spring 2024 classes. You'll be applying for housing uh, and you'll be, uh, signing up for all kinds of spring activities back in Boston. The important things here to note are we will be sending you emails about all of these things. You'll get emails from housing, from uh, your academic advisor, from whoever you need to be in contact with to get all these things set up. This will all happen during the fall while you're in Glasgow. If you are not a uh, U.S. citizen, you'll also need to be working on your F-1 visa. But again, we will reach out to you uh, about how to get this done in time for spring. And as always, please, please check your Northeastern email. This is where all these important emails will come to. So keep an eye on that throughout the semester. And then a brief to-do list. Uh, Ryan, feel free to jump in if you would like to uh, speak a bit about sure. this. Yeah, happy to. Uh, it's me again. So just wanted to do a quick uh, checklist here of things to kind of keep in mind over the next couple of weeks. So please just make sure you're reviewing your Northeastern app status check to make sure that you've completed all fields required um, in your Northeastern app status check. If you have not, we'll be in contact with folks uh, just to get some final information from you all. So just make sure that you've completed all action steps in there. Uh, one of the action steps is uh, the academic course information uh, field, uploading an image of your passport, different fields like that uh, will be in your Northeastern app status check. Please make sure you're checking your Northeastern email daily, uh, if not more frequently, uh, two to three times a day. I think it's good to just get into the habit of that now in the morning, afternoon, and then evening. 
Um, a lot of important information will be coming out over the next coming week, over the next couple of weeks. Information has already been, um, you know, has, has already started. Uh, communications already started. So just make sure you're uh, keeping an eye on Northeastern email. We received a, a number of questions just about group flights and, and asking information about, well, when will we receive like our boarding pass and information about where we'll be sitting. Uh, that information will be sent out over the, the coming weeks um, by our team. So just make sure that you're checking your uh, Northeastern email account uh, daily. Um, housing we'll talk about momentarily. And then uh, over the next coming weeks as well, we'll be sending a day of travel reminders or a no before you go email, which will outline instructions for those on the group flight. We'll also outline instructions for those that are flying independently. And it's sort of like the, the email that will capture probably all questions just about uh, arriving on, on site and checking in and all that uh, will be covered in that no before you go communication. So again, another reason to check your Northeastern email daily. Please make sure you're attending your visa appointment uh, if that's applicable to you. Um, so if you are unsure, if this if you fall in this category, feel free to email nun and northeastern.edu. Um, and please be in touch if you have any uh, visa problems uh, or any, any questions at all with navigating your visa process. Uh, again, that should apply for people that are non-US, non-UK um, folks. And then you can always look on our uh, information tab within our NUN Scotland website under the travel information tab, which outlines instructions about the visa process if you're unsure um, if you fall in this category or not. But we're here to help uh, to make sure that everyone uh, gets their visa if, if that's applicable to you for your UK standard visitor visa. Other items. So one communication that has already gone out is asking all folks to submit their University of Glasgow application, as well as a accommodations application. I believe at this point in time, we have almost 100% of folks that have completed that. So thank you. Uh, if you're someone that hasn't completed either of these applications, which should be I don't know, less, less than five um, sort of folks, then we'll be in touch. Um, but just to, to note that, that those are two very important pieces. So again, thank you for the majority of folks that have already completed those action steps. Uh, other to-do list items, take a picture of any travel documents. It's good practice to get into uh, anytime you're traveling uh, outside the United States uh, or your home country. Uh, confirm flight details with Advantage or personal. So again, you'll be receiving information if you're on the group flight. And then um, of course, making sure if you're flying personally or independently, uh, that you're very mindful of the check-in and check-out dates. The check-in date for this program, the annual in Scotland program, is September 9th, um, so that is a Saturday, and the check-out date for this program is December 16th, um, so making sure that both of those dates are crystal clear. I'll clarify the housing contract momentarily. Um, begin packing, so we went through a lot of different strategies for packing, being mindful of weather, being mindful of the amount of luggage that you're bringing. Uh, believe it or not, Glasgow has a lot of stores. So just in the event that, you know, you ever forget anything, um, you're in great hands uh, with so many shops. And as Liz had mentioned, there is an Ikea trip. So should you need anything for your, or your flat, uh, you have it all right there. So just wanted to share some of that perspective uh, with packing, making a list of top things you want to do and see. As you can see, we have so many great uh, Scotland uh, excursions coming up, with, whether it be going to Edinburgh or going to the Highlands. So a lot of that, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cover for you. Um, but there's so much else to do and see outside of those excursions as well. So make sure you're, you're making your list. And then, of course, get excited for a semester of a lifetime. Um, OK, just wanted to quickly chat about housing contract. So uh, it sounds like at this point, uh, folks have started to hear from our the accommodations team at the University of Glasgow. So these are the folks that kind of help with like the housing assignments and they put you in Calvin Hall Street and their systems and all of that. Uh, you sh should you might have received a communication that outlines uh, your your housing contract. In that housing contract, it will ask for a form of payment. Uh, which is normal for if you're a, re a regular University of Glasgow student just applying for housing. Um, as an NU in Scotland student, you do not need to pay anything um, for uh, that housing contract piece. Um, so just wanted to make sure that that was crystal clear. 
you're not making any additional payments to the University of Glasgow that is already covered by the NUN program and Northeastern. Something else to clarify in that housing contract, unfortunately, the housing contract is sort of automated. Um, so uh, just an important thing to clarify is the check-in and check-out date again. It may list different dates in your housing contract, um, but just to make it crystal clear here, the check-in day is September 9th. So you were not able to check into your housing placement in Calvin Hall Street any day earlier than that, than September 9th. And then the checkout day is uh, December uh, 16th. So, and both of those days are included on our NUN Scotland website under the important dates tab. So uh, it's another place you can find it as well, but just make sure that you're abiding by those dates. Um, so you cannot check in any earlier, and then you cannot check check out any later than uh, December 16th. So I think those are the, the main items I wanted to, to discuss. But Colette, anything else to add to that? Anything related to the housing contract that I might have missed? Um, I don't think there is, but the only the, the only thing importantly is that, yeah, they do, I know you've covered it, but just to reiterate, you do need to um, accept that offer. Um, so do make sure that you complete any paperwork that has been sent to you by email um, from the University of Glasgow Accommodation Office and submit your offer. Um, it has been, the, the accommodation is guaranteed, but they do require the paperwork back just to, to um, make sure everything is all signed, sealed and delivered and um, in place for your arrival. Thank you, Colette. Yes, please make sure that you are uh, sort of accepting that offer, even though it's inherent that you have the housing already. It's just a systems sort of thing that we all students need to do. All right, I think the next slide, Dan. Okay, yeah, just to reiterate the contact information, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, no matter what it is, we want to make sure that you are comfortable as we uh, prepare to embark on this incredible journey. And lastly, uh, again, as Ryan said at the beginning of this, feel free to use the um, Q&A, the chat function in this to ask any questions you may have. We have answered quite a number of questions here today, whether it be myself or Danny or Liz and Colette kind of behind the scenes. Uh, some common trends we're seeing is, uh, is there a meal plan offered for the annual in Scotland location? There is not a meal plan offered. There is an on-campus uh, sort of dining cafe that was outlined when discussing the JMS building. Um, so you can find that on campus. They offer a lot of good budget sort of friendly meals for students so that that is available. But because students live in a flat with a kitchen, um, that'll be the primary way you'll, you'll kind of make meals. Um, there will be kitchen packs uh, for each flat. Uh, they'll include some basic items like pots and pans, um, some other sort of like kitchen utensils, and then anything else you might need outside of that. Uh, again, we have a time dedicated early on in our orientation to go to IKEA should you need anything, but just wanted to bring that up as that was a common question in the thread. I uh, just want to make sure everyone was aware of that all NUN Scotland students are able to register with the NHS as I was outlined in one of our slides. That'll be something we will help facilitate um, to make sure everyone does apply uh, during the on-site student orientation. It will require an action step from you to actually sort of register with the NHS, um, but that is something available to all NUN Scotland students. I'm trying to see another common thread of questions. Look, everything was pretty covered in the presentation. Um, let's see, we'll also be facilitating phone setup as well during the onsite orientation. I know that was a point of concern. Ryan, Don't there worry. was um, there were a few questions asking about proof of funds. Um, so just to just to really kind of cover that proof of funds. We do advise that you take that with you. It's often not looked at, but we do require we do advise that you bring that. And normally it is um, three months worth of bank statements just to show that you have sufficient funds in your or your parents' accounts um, to cover your uh, living costs whilst in Glasgow. 
Thanks, Colette. Uh, another trend of questions, some that are coming in are just about textbooks. So any required texts that you need for your courses, you'll be able to get and acquire already within Glasgow. So there shouldn't be anything you need to purchase in advance. Seeing a trend of any other questions. That answered the, the bulk of questions. If we do not get to your question today, you can always email nun at northeastern.edu with any of your questions. Danny, if you don't mind putting up that slide one more time, I think a few folks are just asking for the contact information. Uh, someone from our team will be able to help answer your question. All right, I believe that's all of our time today, but thank you so much for your time and attention today for this Enyun Scotland webinar. We're very excited for you all to embark on your semester in Glasgow and feel free to reach out if you have any questions, um, but thank you so much.